Hey guys, how's it going? It's Jay from Sony Alpha Lab, and in this review, I'm going to cover the Sony FE 200 to 600 millimeter G OSS lens. Now, this is a super telephoto lens, 200 to 600 millimeter is some serious zoom versatility, and I tested it on the Sony A6600, which is a crop factor camera, so the effective range is actually 300 millimeter to 900 millimeter, which is just incredible. So that's really awesome for field sports, wildlife photography, and things like that. Now this lens goes for about $2,000, and if you're familiar with Sony lenses, that's actually a really good price considering the pro-oriented features and incredible super telephoto zoom range it offers. All right, so here it is in the box, and you can see it's the 200 to 600 millimeter f5.6 to f6.3 G OSS lens. It's a large box, and it comes with a nice bag, like a nice lens pouch that you can put it in that makes it much easier to carry around if you don't want to put it in your camera bag. It also comes with a nice neck strap. Now when you're taking it out of the box here, it comes in a nice bubble wrap here. And here she is in my hands. And again, you can just see it's got some nice pro-oriented build quality features and manual buttons on it. And I'll do a more extensive hands-on in a second. It has a fluorine lens coating on the front of the lens element as you can see here and that's a 95 millimeter thread by the way if you want to put filters on there. It has a nice pinch style lens cap as well. It has a direct drive supersonic wave AF motor. It also has nano AR lens coatings on the elements to help reduce lens flare and give you that killer contrast. It also has a nice lens hood here as you can see it comes wrapped up. The lens hood has a rubber coating on the edge there. The lens also has a linear response manual focus design and it's very smooth on the hands when you use the manual focus. It's dust and moisture resistant construction so it's got a nice decent weather sealing going for it and it has an 11 blade circular aperture diaphragm which will give you nice out of focus bouquet renderings as you will see. It has a minimum focus distance of 7.9 feet or approximately 2.4 meters. It's definitely heavy, 4.7 pounds, so you can feel the weight of it. Now it does have all internal zoom, so you can see the lens does not change size when you zoom. And the zoom itself is very buttery. It's easy to zoom, very smooth. Same thing with the focus ring. It's very easy to turn and it's very smooth with that linear feedback design. Also note, you have the focus hold buttons here. There's one on the side, one on the top, and then there's also one on the bottom right there. Now you got your G badge over here. It also has an adjustment on the lens collar here so you can rotate the collar around, which makes it very easy to either move this up for hand holding purposes, depending on how you like to hold the lens, or if you want to change the orientation of the camera when you have it mounted to a tripod for you know landscape versus portrait orientation as an example. So that's a very nice feature and it's very smooth and easy to use. In addition, on the bottom of the tripod collar, you have multiple thread mounts. So this would be the one that you would screw to a tripod plate, for example, whereas this one, you can mount directly to the top of like a monopod, which is a, a really nice feature to have both of those like that. Also, this tripod collar mount comes off. It has a turn knob here and a release lever on the inside that you push in. So if I unscrew this and loosen that up and then press this little release button, like so, you can slide the collar right off. And now the lens is a smaller form factor, but you can also just leave this mounted to a tripod or monopod and then easily just slide the lens back on. And it locks on so it can't fall off. This is a locking release lever mechanism. And it works really good in my opinion. It's very easy to use. So you have the lens strap mounts here and the other one is over here, which is a nice feature to support the weight of the lens by the lens itself and not the camera. It's too heavy to support it from the camera. So be sure to use these. Now you also have the physical buttons on the side of the lens here. And the first one up here on top is the autofocus manual focus switch. And then you have a focus limiter switch here, which is very nice. 10 meters to infinity. You have 10 meters to 2.4 meters to limit the range. And then you have full from, you know, all the way across the board. Now below that you have optical stabilization on and off, and then you have your different optical stabilization modes. 
The first mode is just general optical stabilization. It'll try to stabilize the lens in all situations and it does a great job. The second mode is prioritized for panning purposes. So if you are panning the lens across left to right, you would wanna use mode two. Now mode three is optimized to stabilize the lens for viewfinder use and it'll make it easier to track subjects through the viewfinder and help stabilize it in that regard. I didn't really notice too much of a difference between mode one and mode three, but you know, it does offer that option and it's worth playing around with if you're using the viewfinder a lot and you're trying to track moving subjects like wildlife, like a bird flying, for example, or a race car or something like that. Now you also have this nice large lens hood and it has a rubber coated lip here and it fits quite well. It goes on both ways. You just have to line it up with that orange line and then you rotate it and it'll lock into place like so. It provides nice protection and coverage, so I recommend always using the lens hood. And it also goes on backwards to make it a little easier to store like so. So let's get out there and do some shooting, shall we? All right guys, so Jace got this awesome pedal car for Christmas and I happen to have the new Sony 200 to 600 millimeter and the Sony a6600 that I'm gonna test while he's taking some pedal car laps around the neighborhood and Layla's also on her scooter so I'm gonna see if I can get some good pictures with this camera and lens combo while the kids are having fun with their Christmas gifts so stay tuned ah. I took some handheld footage here and it was not exactly easy to hold at 600 millimeter, you know, handheld like that, but uh, you can see it came out pretty good. The optical stabilization in combination with the sensor stabilization worked quite well, and the focus tracking while recording video was also very impressive, I thought. And here comes Jace towards me. So here's some 4K moon footage using the FE 200 to 600 millimeter lens. And I uh, was at 600 millimeter filming this whole thing on a tripod, but I did just zoom in in post-processing here so you can just see the incredible detail you can get. All right, so here's what the photos looked like of the moon. And this is straight off the camera here. You can see what my settings were. I was using a tripod, 1 320th of a second at f6.3 and ISO 200. Now if you zoom in here, you can see the detail is quite good. And this was earlier in the month. And here's just an edited version of that shot. Here's another one later in the month that's straight off the camera. And you can see later in the month the lighting is significantly different on the moon, so it looks completely different. Like the shape and everything is just totally different, which is kind of interesting, I thought. And speaking of these moon shots, when I was tried to zoom out to 200 millimeter, the lens actually had a little bit of, of creep to it, and it actually zoomed back into like 350 millimeter on its own because I had the lens pointing straight up. As you can see here on my desk, look what happens when I put it to 200 millimeter. It just like kind of zooms um, in to like 300 millimeter or so while it's facing straight up. It doesn't do this when aiming down, but uh, it is worth noting. A little bit of lens creep there. Just a quick zoom test. I was using my A7R for this, full frame. As you can see on the right, I was just doing a quick manual focus sweep here, and I focused on the lights in the background, 
and then focused back on the little model subject there. And here was just that quick zoom test I showed you with the A7R. Here's what the actual photos look like. This was at 200 millimeter, and you can just see the sharpness and detail is very good. The out of focus rendering is also very nice. And then zoomed into 600 millimeter, that's the kind of range you can expect when you have it on a full frame camera. All right, so I just wanted to show you a few photos of this goose I got. Came out okay, pretty good, I thought. And this was at 600 millimeter handheld. If I zoom in here, you can see the detail is quite good. And the lighting wasn't the greatest for this particular shot. It was kind of gloomy out, and the contrast was kind of harsh with the snow in the background. And if you zoom in to 100%, you can see just how sharp it is. Nice and sharp and crisp. Here's another one. And I could edit these to make them look a little better. And here's just a picture of some weeds nearby, close to the minimum focus distance, and you can just see that detail is really good. The background out of focus area looks really cool, nice and buttery, the rendering. Same thing with this image. And just a few more pictures I took of this Blue Angels airplane, and this was at 200 millimeter f5.6, and then I just went around the plane and zoomed in and took a couple of pictures. Just again to show you the depth of field play you can get with an incredible telephoto zoom like this. It's really amazing. Let me zoom in on this one and show you the detail. I mean, just look at that. That rusty spring on the wheel on the bottom and stuff like that. Looking into the wing. And here's just a fence. And you can see that looks pretty good as well. All right, guys, so I made up this illustration just so I can show you all the available telephoto lens options for the Sony mirrorless cameras as of the time of this review. So from left to right, we have all the available lenses, and they're listed right here on the left so you can just check them out. Now I just wanted to show you where the 200 to 600 millimeter lens fits in. And you can see it over here on the right next to the two Monster Prime lenses. We have the 400 millimeter and the 600 millimeter all the way on the right hand side and that goes for $13,000. The 400 millimeter goes for $12,000. And then the next one on the list here is the 200 to 600 millimeter. That goes for about $2,000, like I already mentioned. Now, in addition, what I wanted to point out was all of the white lenses are compatible with the teleconverters, with the exception of the F4 70 to 200 millimeter G lens. Up top here in the middle, you can see there's a 2x teleconverter and a 1.4x teleconverter. Now that will give you the extra zoom range for sure, but at the cost of light loss. So the 2x teleconverter, you're going to lose two stops of light and a little bit of sharpness detail. The 1.4x, you will lose one stop of light, but the optical quality is a little bit better on the 1.4x. So I would recommend getting that one if you need more reach. Now the 100 to 400 millimeter, when it's in the closed position, is fairly compact and pretty similar in size to the 70 to 200 millimeter GM lens. In fact, it actually weighs less due to the slower aperture but when you zoom in you can see the 100 to 400 millimeter grows quite a bit still not as big as the 200 to 600 millimeter which is located to the right and that's about 12 and a half inches in length and the 600 millimeter is almost 18 inches in length so the sheer size of these lenses is quite massive so anyways i just wanted to illustrate that for you guys with this picture so you can see the different sizes the different prices and of course the weight is at the bottom so you can see the different weights and the filter threads if you wanted to get polarizers or ND filters for these things and also note that these monster prime lenses have a drop-in lens filter design which is only 40.5 millimeter so at the end of the day, I thought the Sony FE 200 to 600 millimeter GOSS lens was fantastic. It is very large and it's pretty darn heavy. In the camera bag, this lens takes up a lot of room, as you can see here. Hand holding for long periods of time is definitely burdensome, and it's worth considering that if you're looking at a lens like this and you really don't want to deal with the weight. It is definitely heavy, but the image quality and the build quality and that incredible zoom range really make it worth it in my opinion, especially when you factor in the price point of $2,000 and you knowing how expensive Sony lenses normally are, that's a really, really good value to dollar ratio, in my opinion. 
But if you need something smaller and less weight, then this might not be the best option for you. You might want to consider the FE 100 to 400 millimeter, for example. Or if you want something even lighter weight, you can consider the new 70 to 350 millimeter lens I recently reviewed, which is also fantastic. And compared to this lens, it's ultra compact and lightweight and gives you a significant telephoto zoom range as well. If you need a super telephoto zoom lens, this is definitely worth considering for field sports, wildlife photography, and anything else you might be shooting that requires that focal range. So I really hope you got what you were looking for in this review, and I would love to hear your thoughts on this lens if you already own it or you're considering buying it. You know, please ask questions below. I also included in the description area below the video links for the lens and the gear I used for the lens as well as accessories that would go along with this lens like lens filters, lens caps, things like that. Lastly, if you found this review useful, please consider giving it a thumbs up below and also be sure to hit that subscribe button on your way out. Have a great day and I will catch up with you next time. Take care.